Hello and welcome to the 2023-2024 fur price, fur market forecast here at Trapping Today. I'm going to do something a little bit differently this time around. So this year, I'm going to start by giving you guys the fur price estimates for the coming year. And uh, we'll talk numbers first, and then we're going to go into the details on why prices are where they're at and what, what really is going on in the market. But I know a lot of you guys want prices, so we'll get prices quick. We'll start with beaver. Expect averages of about $20 to $30 uh, for all grades of beaver. Beaver are selling really well. Uh, quality doesn't necessarily matter as much as it used to because it's all hatter market. Um, expect good prices, all sizes, all grades, low, high, uh, prime, early, late beaver. Uh, it's going to be a pretty good market. It, we expect that to continue throughout the season. Uh, on the other end, coyotes are terrible. Uh, Western heavy coyotes uh, expect averages of probably twenty to thirty dollars. Uh, Eastern coyotes, we're talking more like ten to fifteen dollars, and in the south, maybe you'll get ten bucks, but maybe you won't. Uh, it's just there's really nobody's looking for coyotes. The market is really, really soft. Raccoon market is also quite soft. Most raccoons are going to average less than five dollars. Uh, some of your better raccoons in like like Iowa and Minnesota, Wisconsin, some of your States uh, where people trap really during the prime time and have some sort of norm, northern climate, you might see 5 to $10, maybe a few a little bit better, but mostly raccoons can be pretty weak. Muskrat. Muskrat, most of the time, rats have been pretty steady. The last like 10 years, they've been, um, you know, once they dropped from their high back in like 2012, 2013, since then they've been pretty steady, like three dollars three fifty maybe four dollars that is not looking very good this year i am guessing this might be the first time in a long time that we see muskrats less than two dollars but that's probably going to change that potentially could change throughout the season and we could see some increases later on in the season but early in the season muskrats are not looking very good otter uh probably 15 to 20 dollars uh muskrats i think uh, you should wait till later in the season to sell them because there's chance for upside. Otter, I would sell early because I think there's chance for downside in the otter market. Um, but fifteen to twenty dollars is probably what you can expect early on, at least. Maybe a little better. Wild mink, five or six dollars. Not much demand for them. Red and gray fox, really nothing changed there. Ten to fifteen dollars is what you should be looking for there. Um, <clears throat> red. Fox, gray fox market's been poor as well. Bobcat, not too bad. Now, uh, used to be western bobcats way up, eastern bobcats way down. That's kind of started to converge a little bit to where uh, your western bobcats are still going to see like two or three hundred dollars for your better quality pelts. But the eastern bobcats are actually going to be pretty good. I think about a hundred dollars on average. That's what they've been been doing lately. Even down south, uh, your less prime fur, you're probably going to look at $30 to $60 for those cats. So uh, pretty good prices overall for Bobcat relative to where we've been in recent years. Uh, in the west, it's not as good as it was before, but still not too bad. Skunks, $10 or $15 averages. Not a lot of skunks being harvested, and there's quite a bit of demand for that novelty market. So not too bad for skunks. The same thing with badgers. There's not a lot of them being harvested because the coyote market's so poor. There's not a lot of trappers out there that are actually targeting badgers. So I'm um, probably going to see at least a $20 average on them. Uh, moving on to maybe some of our less common items. Martin, for those of you who trap in northern climates, where I'm at in the northeast, our Martin are probably going to average like $35 or $40. The Alaskan and Northern Canadian Martin looking at $50 to $60. And then the lower end, the Rocky Mountain, uh, probably $20 to $30, maybe toward the higher end of that $20 to $30 range. Fisher, $30 to $40. Lynx, uh, Canada Lynx are going to probably average about $100. Bucks. They've been looking pretty good. And then finally, Weasel, the short tail weasels. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of demand for weasel right now. Two or three dollars for short tails and four or five dollars for long tails. So that's where we're at with specific prices as specific as I can give you for those of you that want a number. Now let's talk about the broader overall 
um, implications of what's going on in the fur market. Before we get into that, I want to thank our sponsor, OnX. The OnX Hunt app is what I use on the trap line to mark my trap locations, to scout, to get landowner information, to check out aerial imagery. Go to onxmaps.com and when you sign up and make your first purchase, use the promo code TRAP, T-R-A-P, you get 20% off uh, at onxmaps.com. So thank them for sponsoring the show and it's an incredible app, very, very useful tool uh, on the trap line. When you're out hunting, out fishing, outdoors, anything, uh, it's just great to have. So we're going to get into this. We're going to look into trappingtoday.com. I did a fur market uh, forecast, update, whatever you want to call it, on the website. And I'm just going to start reading from some of that. You can go to trappingtoday.com and read it for more of the details. But um, I put together a pretty detailed post on what's going on overall in the market. So starting out. Uh, in recent years, uncertainty has been the name of the game in the fur market. Uncertainty is always going to be a factor in your dynamic and changing markets like, like we have with wild fur uh, or even ranch fur. But uh, lately, there's enough events that have unfolded in the past year to give us a decent level of predictability for prices this season. So what I'm saying is uncertainty has kind of gone away. We're starting to see where we're at here. Right? There's there's enough information based on the demand in the market, based on recent sales, to see what is going on. And overall, as you've probably seen when I mentioned the prices, with the exception of beaver, most fur items are expected to bring low prices similar to past years. Uh, we're in a low in the fur market. Some of the northern furs that are harvested in limited quantities like marten, wolf, wolverine, and lynx, those should be met with continued demand because there's just not a lot of supply there and they should bring decent prices. There is some upside to the lower end goods like raccoon, mink, and muskrat, but that all depends on one big factor. And that big factor is ranch mink and how the ranch mink situation plays out, which we'll talk about in a minute. But overall, most trappers would be wise to focus on beaver to pay the bills and trap target the other species where there is opportunity. But beaver market is still going to uh, remain solid as far as we know. Overall, worldwide demand for fur continues to wane. I it's a it's been a conflicting thing for me. It's very very challenging to be in the fur industry, uh, to have a trapping podcast, to be a trapper, to be uh, you know just a, in the middle of this industry and just to watch it slowly decline. And throughout my adult life, the fur market has slowly and steadily declined. And I don't have an excellent explanation for why that is, but I can tell you that it's happening. It continues to happen. There's a few, been a few spikes here and there, but overall, uh, it, it's just, it's a, it's a dying industry. China has long been a major driver of the modern fur market, but the Chinese economy and the consumer sector in China are growing at a much slower pace than their long-term average. This is not the China that we saw back in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015 that was growing at more than 10% year over year every single year. There were tons of shopping centers and malls and housing developments and cities were being built. People wanted to wear fur. Their people had lots of money and shops were stocking up on fur. There was tons of demand and it just had, was this craze and we saw this mini fur boom. That's gone. Uh, that's over. That growth looking back in hindsight was not sustainable and China's economy is probably not going to see that kind of growth for a very long time, if not ever. If you look at the demographics in China, it does not look good. Um, so there's a lot of headwinds uh, in the country's future driven by demographics, debt, and decoupling of global supply chains. We used to get all our stuff from China since COVID. Uh, we've, that's kind of changed a lot. Uh, the next two major consumers of much of our fur are Russia and Ukraine. And guess what's happening in Russia and Ukraine? Big war. So they're in the second year of a major war that's devastated both countries' economies. The strength of the Russian ruble compared to the U.S. dollar, that's been something that my friend Kyle Kotz at Kotz Brothers Lures, who's a sponsor of the Trapping Today podcast, has talked about a lot in the past. He talked about um, the the number of rubles to U.S. dollars that exchange rate has driven fur prices for a very long time. Um, that's kind of changed a little bit. There's less of a relationship there, but really overall, 
Um, the ruble is just has tanked. The ruble relative to the dollar is absolutely terrible, terrible, terrible. What that means is Russians do not have buying power, so they can't purchase our fur. Our fur costs three, four, five times as much as it did um, a few years ago for for in Russian in Russian currency. So they're not likely to buy fur from us. And uh, Ukraine, most Ukrainian retailers and consumers are not in any position to be investing in furs. Unfortunately, they're just trying to defend their country. It's not just these three big countries that are taking a hit. Many countries are dealing with rising inflation and shrinking consumer purchasing power outside of, of this uh, Russia, China, Ukraine um, area. Add to that a record warm winter in Europe last year and Chinese lockdowns from COVID prevented the movement of retail inventory last selling season, it's clear that fur demand is very, very low. Uh, there's one big exception to this low fur demand, and that is the Hatter Market. Hatter Market uses beaver fur to make felt hats. Most of this is cowboy hats, fedoras, other specialty hats. Um, that market, it's dominated by consumers in Western countries. So like us, America, United States, and uh, we still have pretty good purchasing power. I don't know how long that's going to last, but it's still holding up so far. And there's a um, TV series Yellowstone, which is kind of uh, sparked the whole cowboy spirit. And everybody wants to be a cowboy again. And uh, you're seeing a lot of people buying those cowboy hats after watching Yellowstone. Uh, there's also just this wider fashion phenomenon uh, that goes far beyond just the TV show. This has driven up the price of beaver pelts to the highest they've been in more than a decade. And this demand does not seem to be waning yet. So uh, it, it's just like that Canada goose coyote market. It was up, up, up. Now it never lasts forever and it probably won't last forever, but we're not, I think we're, we've just seen the beginning of it and we're not seeing any signs of weakness yet in the beaver market. But we've seen this before. So don't forget, this could drop at any time. Um, fashion trends have a, a way of changing on a dime. And so don't be surprised if it comes crashing down. Uh, but I think we're okay for now. Um, I've been of the mind that demand is the overwhelming driver of fur prices. I've come to that conclusion after quite a lot of years of following the fur market, following supply and demand, seeing changes. And uh, supply does play a critical role. Um, I, I've always been a demand guy because the demand seems to be far greater uh, of an influencer in prices. But we need to think about supply and consider supply. And this is where ranch mink comes in. I told you we'd talk about the ranch mink situation. So ranch mink make up the bulk of the world fur market. Ranch fur is over uh, approximately 80% of overall fur in the world. So wild fur is, is only 20% of the overall fur market. And ranch mink prices have been in the toilet for a very long time. They've been selling for far below the average cost to produce a mink um, for several years now. So a lot of those man ranch mink ranchers have gone out of business uh, or they've dramatically decreased their supply to, uh, to stop losing money. In, in a market with normal demand, this would ex be expected to cause prices to rebound and go up when the ranch mink numbers go down. But unfortunately, ranch mink supply and global fur demand have both been going down at the same time, and global fur demand has seemed to fall at a faster pace than the ranch mink supply. So what that means is prices are still low. However, this backlog of ranch mink, these millions and millions of ranch mink that have been sitting in cold storage for so long, is finally starting to be a little somewhat depleted, and we're working our way through this backlog. Nobody seems to know when that's actually going to take place. I've heard a little bit of rumbling that potentially later on in the season, in the first selling season, like spring 2024, we might start to see the results of that. But I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, that could still be a long time coming. But we're closer than we were before. Um, and, and that's the big question mark about a lot of these, like a raccoon wild mink and muskrat, particularly muskrat prices, um, you, you know, it's really going to depend on how quickly that ranch mink supply starts to uh, decline to the point where buyers 
you need to start looking for other options. When ranch milk prices do start to come up as a result of a low supply, buyers are going to start to look at muskrats and think, hmm, that $3 muskrat doesn't look too bad compared to, say, a $30 ranch mink pelt. And so that in, that's the time when we could start to see some wild fur prices go up. But uh, again, we none of us know when that, exactly that's going to happen. So as a recap, let's go back through some of the species here. Beaver are going to be good. They're going to be good early. Don't worry about waiting for fur to be, get prime. Trap beavers early and often. Sell them early if you can just in case that uh, demand starts to kind of wane a little bit when the supply goes up, because a lot of people are going to be trapping beaver. I don't think we're going to see a s massive spike in beaver trapper effort like we would have in the past as a result of $20 or $30 beavers. Uh, it's just, when you look back at, uh, at these averages, they look great because we're so used to $10 or $15 beaver averages for the last several years. But honestly, we saw $20, $30 averages 10, 12 years ago. And that's back when $20, $30 went a lot further. Inflation has uh, degraded the value of that to the point where $20, $30 beaver is great, but it's not going to make, it's still not going to make any money. Um, it, honestly, you, you know, you, you're still trapping because you love to trap. And people are probably going to spend a little more effort on beaver. But it's not going to be this huge increase in supply in the market. So I think the prices are going to hold up uh, for quite a long time. I uh, could be wrong though. One thing I do see though is beaver caster demand is going way down. And that is a result of the increased supply of beavers on the market. And uh, caster demand has been pretty steady over time. Uh, caster, you know, we were seeing really good caster sell for $80 to $100 a pound. Those days are over. I think we're going to see caster in the $20 to $30 a pound range. That's what uh, where they've been at for uh, a little bit uh, the last couple of months before I record this. There was a recent update from Fur Harvesters Auction that says they are getting interest and they're going to see prices a lot better than that. Um, I would be surprised if that's actually the case. I hope they're right, but I don't think they're right. So uh, I would expect probably $20, $30 a pound, possibly $40 to $50 if we're really lucky, but we're not going to see $60 to $80 a pound caster for a long time, in my opinion. Coyotes, again, not going to be very good. Most coyotes in the country, uh, you're going to have a really hard time selling them. Same thing with raccoons. Muskrat, very poor, but potential for increases later in the season, so you might want to hang on to any grass that you trap. Otter are going to be pretty decent. You're going to catch some otters when you're trapping beaver. I think the high uh, beaver, the, the increased beaver effort is probably going to lead to more otter on the market. And otter demand has been stable. It has not increased with beaver demand. So we're probably going to see a little decline in price. Uh, but you'll be able to sell them. Uh, wild mink, not much market there. Red gray fox, very specialty market. Bobcat are going to be pretty good. So uh, uh, continue, you know, target bobcat, you're probably going to do okay. Skunk's good. Uh, badger, good. And then your, your northern furs are, are going to be decent. You're going to have, you know, pretty steady, decent prices for your lynx, wolf, wolverine, uh, marten, that, that sort of thing. Uh, just because those aren't producing huge supply and there still is pretty pretty good demand for them. They're just, you know, they're really unique. They're unique items. So uh, guys, with that, I hope that is uh, a bit of an update that will help you get started in deciding, you know, what to expect with fur prices. So you're not completely caught off guard when you send to auction or you go to the fur buyer or uh, hopefully may help you decide maybe what to target if, you, if you're not really sure what species to target. But uh, you know how it is. Things can change on a dime. So th any of these prices could change at any time. The market could turn, but that's probably what we're looking at. Again, you're not going to get rich trapping, but we all love to trap. We're not in this for the money for the most part. And I hope you get out there and set some traps and enjoy yourself. Have a good time and maybe get to sell some fur and, and pay for a little gas. All right, guys, take care and go to trappingtoday.com for further updates throughout the season.